Hello everyone and welcome to a Roblox tutorial video and today we're going to be learning how to navigate your Roblox accounts to settings. Roblox has significantly changed the layout of these configurations within these past couple of years making it a little confusing for those who need to adjust certain settings without having to literally google up on YouTube how to enable or disable this and that. So let's get started. Now just for some clarifications in this video, um, I do have a couple extensions added. Like over here you can see I have BT Roblox, RoPro, but even with these extensions on, the layout of these settings should be either similar or the exact same to you guys. And we're just going over the default Roblox account settings instead of going over these two. The whole premise is to just get familiar with your account's actual settings. Um, as well as letting you guys know I'm on PC, but the layout of your settings should be somewhat similar on mobile or the exact same. I don't know, they change a lot of things uh, regarding to layouts on mobile, so you should still be able to follow along as I go through the settings. So to access it, obviously you want to click on the gear icon, go to settings right here. And the first page that boots up is your account info, your display name, user, phone number, associated email address, some personal account information like the age group and whatever. As of recording, you can add your Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and Gilded. And all the way in the bottom is social networks visibility. Basically, who do you want to see your social media is attached to your Roblox account? The next tab is security. Now, in this page, it will display various methods of securing your Roblox account, such as enabling two-step verification, authenticator app, hardware security keys like these uh, USB stick keys that you need to plug into your device when logging into your Roblox account. I made a video going over ways to protect your Roblox account, which if you want to check that out after this video, feel free to. Also, we got backup codes. I really like this one. And sessions that you're logged into. Now, I highly recommend checking out this section here where you're logged in at least once a week, especially if your account is sharing with multiple friends that are like grinding Roblox games for you or just doing whatever, right? Just in case if your account is logged into an unknown device, if you're completely confused of which device is suspicious or not, there's a button at the bottom that says log out all other sessions. This means you will be logged out out of this current device session that you're currently on right now. So make sure you have your login information in hand before you click on that. The third tab is privacy and content restrictions. So we're going to go over, over these one by one. Content maturity. This controls which Roblox games you can join with whatever uh, content maturity. So for example, mine's that restricted. I don't mind seeing the most gory, horror-like whatever Roblox games in my feed. This doesn't really matter, but if you're into like hunting down very suspicious Roblox games that needs to be taken down, I recommend putting it at restricted right here so you can report those types of Roblox games. To go back, just click on this little arrow here and we move on to screen time. So this calculates how much time you're sitting at your Roblox menu plus playing Roblox games. Or it actually counts only when you're in game. I'm not exactly sure, but I find it hard to believe. Uh, some days I'm spending this much amount of time on Roblox. If you're concerned of how I'm getting all these hours, I basically AFK and Bubblegum Simulator Infinite. I think this is really cool to keep track of how much you're no lifing Roblox. Next is communication. And down here basically configurates, you know, who can you chat with within game, like who can chat with you in game, who can chat with you on the website. Um, so experience chat is in game chat. So who can chat to you in game, you either put to everyone or no one. And direct chat is the website chat, which is like all the way down here. I have extensions on, so the button looks really small. Party is basically, you know, a little group chat that your friends make. I really don't mess with this. Um, I just hit up my friends on Discord. We got voice chat configuration. My Roblox voice chat is on, although I should really turn it off because I really don't like Roblox voice chat at all. Camera input. If you want to for some reason have your Roblox face animated with your camera tracking like your face as you're playing, you can mess with that. Down here next after communication is visibility in private servers. Pretty simple. Who can join you in Roblox games? So you want to go over the visibility. Well, actually, first off, there's an online status feature. So who do you want to see online on Roblox? So 
I put their friends. Who can see the current Roblox game you're playing? Also set to friends. And if you want to nag your friends about what Roblox games you're playing, you can enable this, although I don't really recommend. Then back down to private servers. Who can add you to Roblox private servers? I just put the friends only. Because sometimes, especially if you're like a big influencer on the Roblox platform or YouTube, you're going to have like hundreds of random VIP servers and several Roblox games that you have no idea of what these games are, for example. Down here is connections and contacts. Have Roblox connect to your phone contacts to make friends over there. Again, I don't encourage having your phone number in here. That's just my personal safety preference. Trading and inventory. This is for those who are trading on Roblox with these limited items. Who can see your Roblox inventory? So like not just your limiteds, but actually your accessories and clothes that you own. Trading, I also put the friends only, although I almost never really do Roblox trading. Down here is ad preferences. I think this regards to Roblox ads within Roblox games because they have removed the website ad feature like a long time ago. But I do recommend turning these two off just for your safety. Blocked users will show up a list of Roblox accounts that you have blocked. You can either choose to unblock them. Down the bottom in this tab right here is account deactivation and deletion. So if you want to temporarily shut down your Roblox account, just like how a Discord has, um, you can kind of do that. Although it restricts you from using the Roblox website at all. And it appears on other people's devices that you're, I guess, banned, you know? Although, as of recording, they only had the deactivation setting, you can't actually delete your Roblox account. I think deleting your account is possible, but you have to go through a tedious communication process with a Roblox staff member, but... So that's all there is for these tabs right here in privacy and content restrictions. Quite a lot. But the next one is notifications. And basically this manages how you want to receive notifications. Mobile push notifications is when you're on Roblox mobile, like you log into the account, you can configure um, what types of mobile notifications you want to receive. Uh, email, I recommend just leaving this alone just in case if Roblox is trying to give you a code to like enter when you're making like a Roblox trade or doing some security change. Experience notifications, these are just like updates to Roblox games that you get notified of. And community notifications is for like Roblox groups or what it's called communities. All right, so here we are payment methods, the fifth tab. This manages your payment information uh, when you buy Robux and stuff like that. And it shows you your Roblox credit. What's Roblox credit? So for example, when you redeem a $25 Roblox gift card for whatever currency you're in, you actually get $25 worth of Roblox credit instead of Robux directly. With that said credit, you can use it to purchase Robux bundles. So for example, right here, I have only $4.02 Canadian. You can choose to convert that all of that to Robux. Yeah, it's pretty standard stuff here. Next up is Roblox subscriptions. This is where you manage a Roblox premium subscription. If you want to cancel it or whatever, you can also manage any Roblox private servers that you have purchased in the past. Next up is parent controls. Basically, if your Roblox account is over the age of 18, I think, or whatever age range it is, you should be able to see parental controls. If you're like under 13 or something, then you probably won't be able to see this. Roblox detects your Roblox account as a parent account when you do mess with this kind of setting. This is just a place for parent accounts to watch over your child's accounts and see how much time they're spending in Roblox and their transactions, their playtime history, what they do, and etc. <laughs> Lastly, it's app permissions, a pretty underrated thing over here. This is where applications that are third party of Roblox have access to your uh, Roblox accounts. So we got Gilded, Metal, and etc. When I mean access, I don't mean like, oh, they can like go into your account and spend your Roblox or like just join games, you know. There's a whole terms of service of each application that goes into the detail of like why they do need access for it. So if you're trying to link your Roblox Gilded account, then you have to kind of have that allowed and etc. Nothing too crazy here, but you want to be extra safe. You can just kind of remove all of these attachments. And that's pretty much it of touring around your Roblox account settings. Of course, if you have Roblox extensions, there's like in-depth settings for those you can mess around with. But 
For this video, again, we're only be focusing on the Roblox website settings. Also, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that my account is considered 13 plus. So if you're like under 13 or whatever, right, not have certain settings shown or certain settings you can't really configurate with, but I hope this video will somewhat help you at least, whether it's the most important setting you go to configurate with or whatever. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And feel free to subscribe to see more videos like these. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, stay safe, and peace.